Good ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Citizen A, where we wrap the week's current affairs with the best political team on television from a very Auckland perspective. Warning, where's Fear and Bounce is Fox News. Joining me tonight, I'm a revolving panel of bloggers and Auckland opinion shapers. He runs the best independent news site in New Zealand, providing journalists too left wing for gainful employment and means to pay the bills. He makes Mark Sainsbury look like Mark Sainsbury. Editor of Scoop.co.nz, the ever brilliant Selwyn Manning, and he could charm the pants back onto a prostitute. He defines diversity as having a semi automatic weapon and a fully automatic one. The Darth Vader of the blogosphere, right wing storm blogger Cameron Slater. Welcome to you both. Coming up tonight, issue one China asks Auckland city councillors not to attend a full on gong artistic performance. Someone hasn't told China they don't own us yet. Issue two Circo takes over Mount Eden in the Auckland Central Remand Prison this year, and up to 200 jobs are on the line. How will going from staff ratios of 20 to 1 to 50 to 1 provide anything resembling a rehabilitative environment? Issue 3 tonight. While in Auckland, John Key tells TVNZ he doesn't want the Egyptian dictator to stand down because a democratic Egypt might threaten Israel. He follows that extraordinary statement up by announcing the SAS troop deployment in Afghanistan has been extended by another year. Oh, for the days when we had an independent foreign policy. Is David Longy rolling in his grave? And we'll end the show on the final word, but let's kick things off with issue one. The Chinese consulate has contacted Auckland Super City councillors this week and told them not to attend the Shen Wan Performing Arts event because, in their words, the Fulong Gong is an anti-society cult that propagates cultural and heretical anti-Chinese ideas. China doesn't own New Zealand. Yet. So should they be telling Auckland Super City councillors what artistic performances they can or can't go to? So when Auckland Super City councillor Dr Kathy Casey was one of those requested not to attend, why should China have that level of influence over our local body politicians? Well, it has no business having any influence whatsoever in such things. And also it's bizarre in the sense that this is a fairly low-level, under-the-radar type of festival. Mm. You know, we all know that China is extremely sensitive to a number of groups. Long Gong among them, Dalai but also Lama. the Dalai Lama, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you kind of think, come on, chill out. I mean, all this type of effort does, if you're looking from China's point of view, is actually elevate the presence of such groups or mm. people in, in New Zealand. <laughs> but it has no right to actually engage in such way or to actually create through innuendo some sort of what is the con you know questions relating to what are the consequences if New Zealand does not re you know, yeah, ex well yeah. I see it in that way. Well, there's right. not much of a threat. I mean, they can't invade Taiwan, so how are they going to invade New Zealand? Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, from from the point of view of economic invasion, right. I think, <laughs> from genius. the point of view of economic invasion, I think China has already had quite a significant oh, investment in New Zealand, yeah. and that is the concern. It's not just in New Zealand; it's it's the Pacific, right, the Pacific. and we're just another small Pacific nation that they're going to try and bully economically. Cam, let's let's be honest. Phil Hong Kong, like most religious groups, are a bit wacky. They believe their leader can glide slash hover slash levitate but when compared to the cannibalistic death rituals of catholicism the only real crime seems to be meditating quietly in public why does china always want to do a tony veach on them well china's a, a an undemocratic uh, militaristic uh, society that has to have mechanisms in place to control more than a billion or nearly a billion and a half people and you don't do that by being nice um, I mean, India has a good go at trying to run a democracy, but they've still got the, the closed fist to, inside the velvet glove of the army there to, to assist. China just relies on the army. And, um, and so they're quite used to telling people what to do, when to do it, and how to think, and that's just how their government works. And they, they ineptly um, try through political and uh, diplomatic means, which are really undiplomatic, try and lecture other countries on what they should do. and They, don't, they certainly don't like the finger being pointed at them. Mm. They, they take great umbrage when you point out um, you know, that, that uh, the way they've treated the Dalai Lama, who, who, who ironically was a dictator himself. Um, mm. you know, they, they, they don't like being pointed, the, these things being pointed out to them, but oh, they're the quite willing to... Yeah, 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 the yeah, concern yeah, to yeah. me on this issue is that we can now establish quite a trend. You know, these types of suggestions have built oh, up it's been to happening like for a years. pressure for yeah. years. We've seen it in evidence most recently, I suppose, when Michael Cullen's incident with, with uh, the Mr Wong incident. Mm. There. Um, now, that, that was a concern where, obviously, sensitivities relating to Tibet oh, and goes Mongolia back further than that. Um, were enforced by, by the Chinese. And also Jenny Shipley making sure that a bus was parked 
that's during right, APEC in 1999 right. yeah, to yeah. ensure that the well, then premier those, was not back exposed. Back in the 90s, when, when my the father was But the difference, my point being, the difference now is is that we do have significant trade relationships with China. We are susceptible to such things, and that's why I think the concern is: what is China hinting at? What are the consequences if New Zealand does not actually listen to its threats? Well, China, China threatened New Zealand not to go to the Nobel Prize Award ceremony of a Chinese pro-democracy dissident late last year, when we weren't even attending the bloody thing. Does China simply think it can bully New Zealand into doing what they want? Yes. And how does any government, well, they let alone do. local yeah. government, they yes, do think that they can? I, 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 how, how do they do this? Well, thing? you know, let's look at it from another point. You know, New Zealand's a small nation. We all know that. We know its economy is small, but it's significant amongst the Western alliance. But the thing is that New Zealand punches again above its weight mm. globally only on issues of moral argument. Mm. If we abandon our principles in such a way, we lose significance across the globe. We lose our brand identity of independence as well. well China, when it's enforcing this kind of su suggestion through innuendo and even direct contact mm. to politicians, when it is not resisted, is actually successfully relegating New Zealand to every oh, so other we compliant have to resist nation. It every we time. need to every time. But, 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 but the Absolutely. politicians have no spine. I mean, even Helen Clark bowed before the Chinese because, you know, she she said, "Oh no, I won't be meeting the Dalai Lama," and then furtively banged into him, at, you know, in in the lounge at the, at Sydney Airport, mm. which no, is that's a just, backhanded kind which of which is just bollocks, yeah. you know. Um, be up front, front. being yeah. up front about it. Uh, um, in some ways, like you mentioned in your your, um, your introductions, that would don David Longy, you know, turn yeah. his grave over it's a big uh, erosions big into <laughs> into our independence. No, I think you know that hit right at the core of this. Well, David it Long was the last what Prime Minister we had that actually flipped the, flipped the fingers at a foreign power. Exactly, and I think most of the country applauded Ken, him you, for you've that. Well, they were you, French, you, and you've, even you've, I would support yeah. that. You've written off criticism of China purchasing land here as xenophobic overreaction, and have rightfully pointed out that the percentage of land China owns is minuscule compared to Australia or America. But if China are willing to do this sort of political pressure with the small amount they've got, what will they think they can get away with if they own a lot more? Well, you're assuming that China is the one, China the country is the one that's investing in, far, in, in farms or in, in businesses or anything. The, you've well, the got, companies who get very cheap loans from the, uh, the government are the ones well, that it, Well, it, almost any company can avail themselves, it, from, coming out of China, of cheap loans. I mean, yeah. they've got so much money. They've got all of America's money, and they've got most of Europe's money. That, so that's so Kenny stuff, <laughs> you know, so, holding so, on so to what, that. So, so, so they've got more. Um, well, well, what do you do? Do you put the shutters up and say, no, we're not going to have the Chinese here? You have to have valid, sensible reasons rather than ones just based on the, on the location on the globe where they come from. I mean, a case in point, though... But if they're doing is, this kind of pressure now, what, do they, what, what can we expect all, if they have They've more? always done this pressure. Okay, so, you know, so they, as I said, they, they, they used to ring up my old man when yep. he was the president of, of the National Party and put, try and get him to put pressure on MPs. And he'd just politely tell them to go take a hike. It's yep. a democratic society and but hang up. That, good, was that, that was the late the the And good on yeah. him okay. for doing that. Yep. That's what we would like to see from our elected representatives oh, now. Absolutely, doing much I agree with you on that. And the thing, the tide has changed since then. You know, clearly we have closer economic relationships mm. where New Zealand is, but, is but China, vulnerable. China, we, the China has essentially taken over, uh, well, it's taken over the military supply and the financial uh, sovereignty of Fiji. Uh, it's moving in big ways in Samoa. Diplomatically, uh, it's... A, totally yeah. in Tonga. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, and, and, and if you go to and uh, Vanuatu up, and yes, places like that... Just going this, to add in you know, Melanesia, you, it's yeah, significant. Yeah, Melanesia port of particularly... Exactly, yeah. they're brand new airports, brand new port facilities, brand new roading networks. Uh, new so Zealand's so the next. Buying up, then we're, new we're Zealand next is the line. next in okay, line. So and they are coming here, and, and and we have to resist that pressure. And how are we going to do that? I don't okay. think we have to resist China's interest in investment in some ways. We need to oh, no, protect need New Zealand's investment. national yeah. interest. Okay, okay and question, that's, that's the question point. to both of you: By making these sorts of ridiculous demands over artistic performances. Doesn't China only end up confirming New Zealanders' worst fears about the largest totalitarian communist regime on the planet? Do they need to hire Bill Ralston? Well, I think that's a clever strategy of actually picking a high-profile media personality 
and actually having that individual represent, it puts a smiling, comfortable, and actually a conservatively reliable face to some you of the areas. You could do areas. that job for me. I, I could do that. Uh, you know, I'm, yeah, a, I, I'm a mercenary. I'm, yeah. I'm for hire. That exactly. whole, whole, I'd probably do that, a better job. That too. whole strategy, though, engenders a certain degree of caution and, and, and angst. I, I but think they are inept, though, when it comes the Chinese in general, when it comes to dealing with things in a diplomatic and political level. Because this just makes... It, 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 I mean, it's it laughable. I mean, fears, it? honestly, uh, if you've well, ever a, been to a, a Chinese mm -hmm. cultural thing like this, I mean, it's a lot of drum banging and lots of bright yellow, and it's it's really rather painful on the ears, lots of screeching and stuff going and I, on. I think, you I'm know, not sure that it's with, die in the ditch sort of stuff. With the People's Republic of China, too, you know, it, it does not have an understanding, perhaps, of the New Zealand way yet. Salwin, who wins and who loses by having China tell our local body politicians which artistic performance they can and can't go to? Oh, I think China loses because it makes every New Zealander or every body that lives here in New Zealand that's embraced the New Zealand way actually resistant to yeah. that. Yeah. China, China loses because we just bristle. When we, get, you know, yeah. uh, when we get told what to do by other countries, we bristle. We don't like yeah. it. That's why we're an independent yeah. Pacific Island state. And we say, yeah, exactly. And, and we hold our head up high and we like to think we compete. Um, really well on the international stage, and having a, a, a bully boy uh, military dictatorship tell us, you know, how we should be thinking or which drum banging ceremony we should go to. And it doesn't it matter doesn't what work. flag they fly. No. Thank you, panel. Issue two: Circo takes over Mount Eden and the Auckland Central Remand Prison this year, and up to 200 jobs are on the line. How will going from staff ratios of 20 to 1 to 50 to 1 provide anything resembling a rehabilitative environment? Selwyn, Circo faced criticism last week over the death in the UK of a 14-year-old who had been assaulted by a staff member and who then committed suicide oh, in his cell. God. Where do the interests and safety of prisoners come in this new privatised penal well, That's the whole idea, get rid of corrections. Well, when you look at those ratios you factored into the, they're obviously on economic models. Um, one has a degree of concern as to what safeguards has the government put in relating to the contractual arrangements for this company. The other thing that I am concerned with is if the, if the government and the country actually embraces this move for private sector to provide what is traditionally a societal problem or issue to deal with, mm. why on earth does that contract go to an offshore entity from the UK, for example, that has actually got a track record here that is in, that's cited in law of problems at a systematic level well, and breeds a culture of victimisation. You're talking about corrections. Talking. They've got a cultural issue. Can you issue. honestly believe that the market can reduce costs? We've had this debate before. And while private prisons bypass union set working conditions, aren't those working conditions set for everyone's safety? Doesn't cost cutting for corporate profits risk the safety of everyone in the prison? Well, I don't agree with your contention at the beginning about a re rehabilitative um, environment. This is the remand prison that we're talking about. It's completely different. Um, and, the, and it also includes Mount Eden prison as well. Sure, but you're talking about the remand prison. Yeah, well, they've taken, taken, taken over both of them. Sure. Um, now, the environment in the Auckland Central remand prison is completely different from the environment in, in the old you know, Victorian Mount Eden prison. And staff ratios in, in that old style prison would would need to be at a higher level. Um, the point is is that staffing levels in, in in a broad brush across the country, let's have a twenty to one ratio, might not necessarily be mm. the answer, particularly in some of the surely, new prisons that are being mind. built. Surely, 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 hold on, hang, surely hang on. in remind you actually need more protection. Some of those people are innocent. Well. Well, actually, you're, you, they're all innocent before the law. Yeah, well, right? yes, they're in the remand prison, yeah. some of them are there because they've been charged with particularly so heinous they, so crimes. They, so, they, so they do need or a lot of protection, right? I mean, they need, they, so you need a higher ratio. Well, they've actually got pr in protections through in the environment that they're in because the, that remand prison is... is got innocent people with... It, it is no, a valid point it's, there, It's though, structured it, it, completely yeah. differently. It is, it's got it is greater valid, electronic security. Yeah, it's got greater... I've seen inside it myself visiting. It's a whole lot better than Mount Eden, isn't it? As a state, yes. It is, but the, the the issue does is you know it's an accurate one in the sense that people in the remand have have to face a consequence. They're treated that, that differently it, from it, in a normal prison. Yeah, they and, honestly and, and are. it's like a venturi valve in yeah. the sense that all the emotions and the consequence of having been nabbed yeah. rightfully or wrongly 
come and manifest themselves at that time in remand. So it needs careful handling. I agree but with Bomber's questioning there, that okay, it does sure, need but the analysis that, to actually you know, figure to, out to, whether or not to, this deal is going to protect. But, but for Bomber to use the, the line that, oh, well, Serco's um, had a guy that's beaten up a 14-year-old. Well, it is a valid part. If it is a valid yeah. part, then, then Bomber should be calling for the dismantling of the corrections department. Well, no, it was Serco that, that did it. In that there. instance. But yeah, that's it, right. But, but it was also but Rimataka yeah. prison. Rimataka prison. Yeah, and violence. Yeah, 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 and that's yeah, yeah, run by yeah, who? That's right. That's, that's yeah, run that's by the right, corrections exactly. department. Yeah. So it's something something not the company. So on, so on. Yeah. Serco run detention centres have been linked overseas with violence, lack of adequate health care, and overcrowding, suggesting no one will actually notice any difference from the current public system. But is that Serco's problem so, or so the how, government that's how, controlling how those? How can anyone politically sell the benefits of a public prison system when its infrastructure has been so underfunded and we have raw meat law and order? But you contractually. I you think the way, the deal with it. way it's dealt with as far as sowing it into the public arena is mm. one of relying on the ideologies. But it comes back to value judgments, I think, in mm. the sense that people that have offended, irrespective of where and in, in, in what arena, is a community and state problem. And I see it as an abhorrence, in a sense, that the government then puts the running of prisons out for profit to private enterprise. I, I just think it's an I incongruous concept. Any issue at Can all evidence, with that. The state the, is still evidence incarcerating evidence them. Evidence from the US and Australia show private prisons do not reduce costs for the government. Peter Boyden, how the CEO of GEO, told the yeah, CEO yeah, of yeah, New yeah. Zealand that private prisons don't save money. If the main cost-cutting benefit from private prisons is a myth, if it is, what would you as a right winger need to see before you stop supporting private prisons? Um, it's not a matter of, of, of stopping supporting private prisons. I, I actually think that, that the state doesn't have a role in in a whole lot of areas. Yes, it has so a role in... an ideological thing. It's an, yeah, what I'm so saying... Even if you saw the evidence. Is, is that, is that th there's no reason why the management of a prison and the employment of the people who are going to be running... Mm. There's no reason why the state should categorically 100% have to do that. There's no valid reason. There's a, there's a in terms, of, in terms of all the things you've yep, brought up yep. in terms of um, you know violence, and that happens in state-run prisons right, that's right, yep. all around the world. And, and, and so that's it, it actually is a it's quid a pro quo. So, so it does so, boil down to the So profit. It's, it's the environment, right, and the, and and the, the management of the people and those sorts of things. But um, if, we, if, the, if you have contractually in place that uh, if these sorts of things happen, there are substantial penalties for that, uh, and I know, for instance, that uh, private companies have been transporting prisoners for decades now uh, from prison to court. Mm -hmm. um, and I know exactly what the penalty is for a prisoner who bolts. It's, it's over $150,000 if they go out the doors. And, 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 and so it, you it, can... Yeah, hold, hold it. But isn't it true that most of those who have those contracts try desperately to dump them because they don't want well, the bloody well, things and no one picks them up? Well, the thing is, is I think that uh, in the past, and, and not just in New Zealand but around the world, and you take overcrowding as an example. Um, that, that's not the company who's managing its issue. Uh, they, get, they get the bodies to actually have to manage, and they've got the resources that they have to manage to, to put that in. The state is still responsible for the building of the prisons. The state is still responsible for this the incarceration the policy. Kicks in, yeah. Clearly, is that you know this is an example of what we've talked about for some time with Nationals' reinvention of what its ideology is, and that is, in the 90s. It did not wish to get involved with the bricks and mortar. Yeah. Now we see that it wants to be in the bricks and mortar, wants the facilities, but it will but put private yeah, yeah, profit-making yeah, entities in to run them. Question and to both of you. Is, 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 isn't the reality that we have such a lynch mob mentality towards prisoners that yeah. we can keep them in cattle trucks with exactly. members of the public allowed to poke them yes. daily with sharp sticks? And Garth McFiggers would still say hey, that's a good it's idea, too good Bomber. for them. Um, until the public move beyond rage, nothing positive will come out of the New Zealand penal nation, will it? There has I, I to be punishment, that, though. I, I fear that that's the case. I, I think that a sane, rational debate at a political isn't possible, level isn't, isn't possible yeah. because it is actually designed to get votes. 80% of the votes. population it, um, thinks that people should go to prison and stay there. They do. Right? Thank you. They're not on the streets anymore. Go away. Obviously, we don't want to see you anymore. That is the pure political yeah, fact but, but, of the matter. But, but, but if, but if, Some if, of those if, people if, eventually but, have but to come out. Exactly. If the process is so dehumanising, they come out worse. How counterproductive? Well, is some that? people actually shouldn't be coming out, and that's a, another issue altogether in terms of our justice system. But this is a whole. Different but the argument. management of prisons yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is not the issue. Selwyn's right. 
it, it's a societal issue, and we need to address the issue before they end up in prison. So Once they end up in prison, who, who, who no one who cares. Who loses by privatising prisons? Oh, I think New Zealand loses, yep. and it loses its ability to actually in, uh, have, have stop checks here. That's something that's put aside relating to breach of contract doesn't mean that there's a public debate okay. on such breaches. Cam, who wins, who loses by privatising prisons? I, I don't see there's any winners and losers per se, except on individual cases. You know, Corrections was running the prison where a prison guard was killed. Mm. Corrections was running the prison where Antony Dixon magically beat his head against a concrete wall in his cell repeatedly, so much so that he died. Now, he actually did us all a favour, but did he do it by himself? Thank we don't know. You. Thank, thank you, panel. Coming up, John Key supports dictators for Israel while <sighs> letting the SAS stay in Afghanistan because they asked him nicely. Does Murray McCulley even question his orders from Washington anymore? Citizen A is back after the break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, this is Citizen A. We're reviewing the week with right-wing storm blogger Cameron Slater and editor of scoop.co.nz, Selwyn Manning. Issue 3 this week. While in Auckland, John Key tells TVNZ he doesn't want the Egyptian dictator to stand down because a democratic Egypt might threaten Israel. He follows that up by announcing the SAS troop deployment in Afghanistan has been expanded for another year. When Washington calls, does Murray McCulley answer the phone with, what is your bidding, master? <laughs> Selwyn, since when did we prop up dictators to keep Israel safe? Was this a colossal mistake by Key that luckily for him was self-censored by the mainstream media? They didn't report on his support uh, of the Egyptian dictator at all. I, I think it's another example of the national-led government actually being out of touch with what is effective international diplomacy. Mm. Also understanding exactly what it is. And what I, can make we a do point. I what make can a point. What can we do? Yeah, well, I, I make a point that Murray McCulley's response per, to, to Egypt was one where you would expect that kind of statement to come out of the United Nations Security General's Office or Barack Obama. We are a small independent state. Mm. He would have been far better to have addressed the concerns of those from that uh, living in New Zealand, of that community, rather than sitting there and saying, we urge you to settle down overseas. Well, so Cam, Cam, a favourite right-wing bogeyman theme is that if the Middle East are allowed democracy, then they'll elect Islamic regimes. Is freedom and democracy that's only true. freedom and democracy when the party that, the West supports that, 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 That's not true. Um, Lebanon doesn't have an uh, Islamic fundamentalist um, regime, and they're a democracy, although they have to be very careful they don't Algeria know. though was but certainly a, the, an example sure but that's a little bit f further out to, to you know to the uh, African coast from from where we're talking about is, with is Egypt. it only, is it only freedom and democracy when the party we want wins? no that's not true but you've got to look at, at Egypt's history you know in 1952 when NASA um, with the army took over that was the end of democracy in Egypt. They didn't have democracy from 1922 to 1952 when they had an, a monarchy yeah, controlled I, I by think the Ken army. That raises a valid point so, in this whole thing. It so it's good to have democracy, but but what these countries do tend to end up with is not a democracy anyway. They still because have a strong... Because of long periods of oppression, right? And the radicalisation of the Sure, but Hosni, Hosni Mubarak and, and Anwar Sadat... Uh, uh, Sadat in the end came to the conclusion that there's no way that they, they had had several goes at trying to beat Israel and got snotted every time. Mm. One, one of them was six days, it was all to, over. To, 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 but to, they were backed by the Soviet Union. If you have a look yeah. at the weapons that are on the street in the hands of the army, yeah. they are Soviet weapons. Question, question to both of you. Uh, what are your predictions for Egypt? Are Western-backed dictatorships for cheap oil a thing of the past? I think there's, no the, there's a Egypt. change here and there, you know, there's a lot of debate as to how this relates to other events that were significant in the globe um, back like the 1989 fall of the Soviet Union. Now, there are similarities, but there are major differences too, clearly, that this is not a centrally controlled uh, phenomenon that's going on here. It's a resistance to authoritarian states. Mm. We see a transition here between authoritarianism and something, right. but yep. nobody yep. really knows what right. that something is, including the United prediction States. Prediction is, is, is with Egypt is the army will take control. Mm -hmm. They're slowly shutting it things down now. The, the first thing they has. did is flick the switch on the internet, which mm -hmm. which is ominous. And we've now got Lieberman in the in the states trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's scary. Uh, we, that, that should be resisted with everything. But in terms of Egypt, the army will shut things down. Yep. They'll move to protect um, the cities, and. Um, uh, 
it's clear that Mubarak has lost the support of the army. Mm -hmm. He is a goner. Mm -hmm. um, he'll probably have to go into exile because someone Saudi will kill Arabia? him. I don't think, no, he won't go to Saudi Arabia because he's, he's not um, a, a, an Islamist. So when uh, John Key has decided to allow the SAS to stay because they asked and said, pretty please, doesn't the executive <laughs> decide whether we remain in wars rather than yeah, the military? And they so do. stay in Afghanistan. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, they said they've got a job to do and they'd like to finish their job. Like these, you know? sure, they these sure they would have said it in Vietnam too. But these they're damn good at their job. These decisions were made as soon as our government here elevated our relationship in Afghanistan to combat but, uh, roles. Yeah. Now, on, as soon on, as that decision was made, said we said yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when yeah, you say yeah, our government, I said our government. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning that the Phil government. Phil Goff yeah. sent yeah. him to yeah. Afghanistan. Yeah, and there's a lot more to come out all about that That's period right. too. Oh yes, WikiLeaks yeah. is going to be fascinating, exactly. isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. um, this is going to continue on. Another 12 months, yes, eroded down from 70 combat SAS troops yeah. down to 35, but the, sing single, the, the signal is the same. It is saying to every person that has sympathies to the Arab nations right. that New Zealand is not an in there nation. representing the Western way of handling yep. the problem in Afghanistan. Can, it's problem can be there. honest, we are going to lose the war in Afghanistan and our presence being viewed by locals as an occupation force is part of the problem. How do you justify continued Afghani military intervention? Afghanistan has been, Afghanistan's been a problem since Hannibal tried to yes, go through there. Right, right? Right. <laughs> you don't win, no that's one right, ever that's does. Right, that's right. So however, we however, got, however we've got an SAS. They are probably some of the best combat troops in the world. If I was um, a, an American general tasked with dealing with terrorists and, and, and um, you know, nutters with AK-47s, I'd be on the phone saying, could I please have your really good soldiers, please? That's what they're trained to do. Um, I don't have any problem with them at, going there and yeah. doing a damn at, at good job. At this stage, okay. I don't see a retaliation by the general electing public against yeah. John Key's no. decisions yeah, yeah, in this yeah. way. But... There is a lot more evaluation to take place sure. on exactly what our roles were and what we were involved with in yep. past times. Yeah. Final, and that final, may I mean, there's a lot of question, failings final, in Final question to you both. How does propping up a corrupt regime while handing over prisoners to well-known torture units help win hearts and minds? We, well, it? that's the key to the issue Do we want the Taliban here. back, though? Um, all we need to do is to look to other social democratic economies up in North Europe for example, Denmark, to see what consequences that kind of thing has. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Cam, your final word this week is? My final word's to, to Maggie Barry. She's out there uh, in the paper today saying that she's interested in uh, Rodney, North Shore, Coromandel, and almost any other uh, seat that's out there. And she's becoming almost like Phil Twyford for the, for the National Party. Um, not a not a party hopper, but an electorate hopper. An electorate hopper. hopper. It's almost Maggie. I'll be there if it's anywhere. You know, uh, type type arrangement. That's not how you win a national party selection. And uh, just because you've uh, got a nice Photoshop pictures, and uh, you have alleged celebrity status, is not going to get you across the line, especially when you're touting yourself out around all of the electorates that happen to to come across your desk. Sal, and your final word this week is? I think um, it, we, it would be great if we actually put an eye across to our mates in Queensland yep. and actually gave some thought to them as they mop up and, and, and repair the damage from the cyclone that stormed through this week. Thank you, Sal, and thank you, Cam. Ladies and gentlemen, to my final word, agreeing to go on Tony Veach's radio show weekly but dumping BFM, Kiwi FM and RDU while avoiding any interview on Radio New Zealand is hardly allowing the media to hold John Key to account, is it? He's not in the locker room having a beer, watching a porno, laughing it up with the lads. He's the bloody Prime Minister wanting to embark upon the most significant privatisation agenda in a decade while cutting public services. Shouldn't he be answering those questions rather than who he thinks is hot? I don't look to my Prime Minister for who in the over 40s market is deemed hot or not. I look to the Prime Minister to explain controversial policy he is trying to pass with arguments that don't stack up. I'm not sure John Key holding a MILF report each week is really my expectations of the office. One question we could ask John Key is that when he endlessly repeated mum and dad investors as to who would benefit from privatising 49% of our state assets, did he actually mean the massive Chinese giga conglomerate Chinese King Ho who are on the South Island right now looking to buy vast amounts of coal and iron ore and whom are also eyeing up the very state assets John Key has put on the block for sale. Liz Hurley's hotness is not the issue. 
who we are really selling our assets to is. If you like tonight's show, please join our Citizen A Facebook site and connect with other like-minded new citizens and follow me on my Citizen Bomber Twitter and Citizen Bomber Facebook page. Thanks for watching, Fana. Good night, Aotearoa. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.